Hello and welcome to the second week of Tony Hawktober 2019, where we're taking a look at all of the handheld titles for the series. Every single one. Just to recap quickly, last week we started off with the portable Pro Skater games, saw the quality decline on the Game Boy Advance, while the PSP and Nintendo's dual screen filled the void quite nicely. So let's continue on that path today by taking a look at Tony Hawk's Proving Ground on the Nintendo DS. The console version of this game the real console version, in my opinion, was somewhat underappreciated. Many felt that the continued road into a more career-based, semi-realism approach was growing stale, while others like myself found it to be the truest form of a modern Tony Hawk experience that proved the series still had some energy left, standing its ground against EA's first skate title. But how was that reflected on the DS? Let's drop in and take a look. The game starts at our rundown skate park with Tony, who is looking for a cool place to end his next tour. After speaking with Mike V and Sheckler, who are also here apparently, we put down a new obstacle in the park and set off to meet pros to fund more. This is just American Skateland over again. Really? They couldn't think of anything better? How about using the actual narrative of Proving Ground, where we have to focus on different styles of skating? Of course, that is actually here, but we'll get to that in a moment. Before we can start the first level, we make our skater, but this mode is in the toilet again. It's like a joke at this point. There are a bunch of really weird items for making cowboys, pirates and robots. What's wrong with just a simple selection of normal clothes so that I can at least try to make my character look half decent? One new feature of note within the design tools that caught my attention though is the ability to draw on the texture maps for what we're wearing. So if you wanted, you could have a go at making some custom threads, which is an interesting concept. It doesn't do a whole lot for me though, given the sporadic and wild selection of items to begin with, but still a sound progression for the feature. Getting into the actual game now, and yes, this really is Skateland with a Proving Ground skin. Mission completion is now based on amateur, pro and sick rankings, with similar mission types as the console versions. All of the levels are laid out mostly the same and all feel authentic to play, with nice graphics and a solid selection from the strong soundtrack. What can I say, really? It's standard procedure at this point. Now, in fairness, there is nothing wrong with standard procedure if the core elements are still well done, like we saw with Skateland. But the problem here is that there is nothing, nothing new to comment on. And at a time when this series was at its crossroads, that's not a good sign. The skater styles that played a big role on console are here again with a career and hardcore path. So completing career objectives changes your influence one way and the opposite for hardcore. But there is also a huge amount of objectives that are listed as neutral, meaning half of what we're doing here has no impact on anything. And on top of that, there aren't enough missions within the levels to allow for a true path in either direction, as you need to follow both styles to even progress. That completely defeats the purpose! That's like in Red Dead Redemption with the honor system. No matter how hard you try to go down a certain road, a story mission will come along and flip you in the opposite direction. So that's just great. Nothing means a damn thing here really makes me want to put the time in. With each new pro we impress, we get to see some full motion video, which is actually pretty neat. We haven't had any of that on the DS yet. And then we select a new park piece and move on to the next area. That's it. That's the entire game. I'm sorry, there's not even any clever jokes I can make about this because the game is such a joke as it is. 
Once you've completed the park, which I will admit is a lot more satisfying this time around thanks to the extra space and consideration for layout, we get a set of pro challenges to complete on each park piece as our finale. In the end, I've finished up as a strong hardcore skater, which doesn't seem to influence the ending at all, and I'm pretty sure the only reason that even happened is because the hardcore missions are generally a lot easier. But we also have classic goals to complete, of course. It's amazing how such a strong concept for a mode that works across any of these games just gets so exhausting when the levels and games themselves just don't live up to others in the series. I praise the final GBA game as it did the best it could to improve upon the formula and technical ability of its predecessors. But I'm afraid, Vicarious Vision's final Tony Hawk outing on the handheld systems just doesn't have the same spark. They've done some tremendous work for the franchise, stopping at nothing to include the finest details and every major gameplay enhancement that each new title introduced, from reverts and manuals, walking, open worlds, and here with the gesture tricks. Clearly it's trying to imitate nail a trick, but Jesus, it feels so much more like a gimmick here. The less said about it the better, because it's fucking lame. And while everything else is okay, it's just okay. Without any attempt to try and do something new or different, the end result feels a lot more like a repackage of a previous game instead of something new. Proving Ground on Nintendo DS gets 4 out of 10. Well that's depressing. What happened to this series? Oh man. We can't start the second week of Hawktober on such a downer like that. <sighs> Alright, well since we have some extra time, let's take a couple of steps backwards and check out Project 8 on PSP quickly. Now I know what you're probably thinking, this is not going to be like the fun 7th gen version of the game, this is going to be the drizzling shits of the Shaba Games port to 6th generation systems, so why even bother talking about it again? Well, let me show you. Of course it is just that, the poverty version of Project 8 that I grew up with exactly the same. Missions are the same, there is no open world, and watching bullshit advertisements takes priority over gameplay. But, what this version has over the console game is that Poverty 8 on PlayStation Portable also includes a classic mode. Now, I just said a moment ago that seeing this same mode included all the time is exhausting. But in a shocking turn of events, this classic mode is by far the best classic mode of the entire series. Behind Underground 2 and Remix, of course. It's built on the base of American Wasteland's classic mode with Chicago, Minneapolis, The Mall, and The Ruins, but also includes Marseilles, Downhill Jam, Alcatraz from Pro Skater 4, and Hawaii from Tony Hawk's Underground. Wow, that's a strong set of levels, and it's both strange, but also interesting experiencing them in this game. Unfortunately, it also serves as a great showcase of how much the controls and physics of these games has degraded over the years. Yeah, it can butcher this game at times, and being on a portable system certainly makes it worse, but classic mode still manages to be quite enjoyable, and that's only the half of it. Unlike any of the other classic modes across the entire series, this one features mission objectives at the amateur, pro, and sick rankings. So not only does this cater to players of varying ability, offering up quite an intense challenge with the sick goals, I might add, but it also offers some replay value to continue coming back to the mode. I'm seriously impressed with this, but why is it tucked away on the PSP port of a shitty PS2 port? Man, that's beyond me. 
What is it with the PSP games in this series having more to offer than the console counterparts? The only problem I have with this edition is the lack of being able to free skate these levels. Where are they? You're really telling me the only way to play them is in the time sensitive rounds, even after I finish classic mode? What a fuck up. Still, this mode is an addition that really helps this version of Project 8, even if the main game overall is still unbearable at times. So, Project 8 on PlayStation Portable gets 4 out of 10. Okay, so it's not a super happy ending, but it still helps to wash the taste of proving ground out of your mouth. And yes, I'm well aware that the PSP is a much stronger system, but we've previously seen two much better games on the Nintendo DS. So I hope you understand that hardware comparisons are a moot point. By now, things were shifting gears with the Tony Hawk franchise ready for the ride experiment because motion controls were the hot new thing. Apparently. Well, if anyone knows motion controls, it's Nintendo. So, until tomorrow, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.